My name is Roger Pafford and welcome to Film and the Viewing Camera. In this video, I'm going to describe the parts of a viewing camera and the steps you'll take to make your first picture. Also, this will give you a chance to learn some of the basic language of film photography and film cameras, and it'll give you a chance to figure out if you have all the bits and pieces you need to get started. I'm using a Cambo SF 4x5 inch viewing camera. This camera was manufactured sometime in 1994 or later. On the front of this camera is the lens. The lens has three parts, the front element, the shutter mechanism, and behind that, a rear element. So this is an example of a 400 millimeter lens. Here's the front element, here's the rear element, and in between is the shutter mechanism where you'll adjust the aperture and the shutter speed. Additionally, there's a cocking lever here for loading the shutter mechanism. And when you press the release cable, it will depress this release. This lens is mounted onto a lens board. The lens board can be released and the whole thing can come off. And this is one way of changing lenses. If you only have one lens board, what you can do is just loosen these screws and remove the lens and being careful not to drop it, replace it with a different lens and then screw it back into place. The lens board is attached to a front standard. Behind the front standard is the bellows. The bellows stretches and compresses so that you can adjust focus. And behind all of this is the rear standard. And in the rear standard is a little doorway here where you can insert film holders like so. This is a film holder. And you're going to load your film into your film holder in a dark room or in a dark bag. Now to load your film holder, you're going to take your film holder and pull out your dark slides. Now dark slides are held in place by these little twisty metal bits. They're sort of like claws. They keep you from accidentally pulling these out. But when you pull out your dark slide, it frees the other end so that now you can take your piece of film. The little notches in the upper right hand corner are, are when you're looking at it this way, your upper right hand corner, then you insert the film in a dark room or a dark bag into these lower grooves, okay? And then when you do that, you can close the little flap, insert your film slide or your dark slide, and it's locked. Now no light can get in there. And if you want to load two pieces of film onto your film holder, same thing, remove the other dark slide. Probably should have done that first. And again, we're in a dark room, and here's the little notches on my film. By the way, the notches tell you what kind of film it is you have, and I guess if you know your film that well, you're pretty smart. And you, aha, there, it's locked in, two dark slides in, two pieces of film, and one film holder. Now, if when you're pressing in the dark slide, if you meet resistance, it's probably telling you that the dark slide and the film are in the same groove. They're, they're pinching each other. So pull your dark slide out, remove the piece of film that you have, reinsert it carefully, making sure it's in the bottom most of the two grooves, and then replace your dark slide. We've just loaded a film holder now. There's something missing on this film holder and that is a handy dandy label. You can buy these at office supply stores and these are half inch labels. And believe me, they are a lifesaver and you place them onto the front. 
heavy film holder, like so. And now you can write the kind of film, what type of film you've used, right there on the label. And later when you're actually taking pictures, you can write down additional information like, oh, well, what was my f-stop, my aperture? What was my shutter speed? And was there something special about the situation? I could scribble it in the corner. You could do it here, or you could do it in a little diary, but doing it here will help you to avoid confusing cartridges and getting things out of order. Trust me, this is vital. When you place your tripod, make sure it's on a stable surface. It has to hold up a lot of weight and we don't want it sinking into the ground. The camera is held onto the tripod by a, an adapter like this. This is quite strong. This will hold my camera, which weighs approximately 12 pounds. Make sure that it's firmly mounted, that it isn't going to fall off. I'm opening the aperture. I'm going to use a bath towel as a hood just to line the camera up. I'm changing the f-stop to f-16 so I can get a deeper field of focus here. When you do focus, You'll have to focus not only in the center, but in each corner as well. Now it's difficult to see in this particular video, but actually the headlight and the rearview mirror are neatly focused. My next step is going to be to measure my exposure. The film I'm going to use today is an ISO 100 film. So I want to make sure that my meter is set at ISO 100, and it is. If I aim to set the headlights, it tells me I should be shooting at a 5.6 with a, a lens speed of 250th of a second. If I shoot at some of the red details, I get an almost an identical reading I'm going to choose an f11 with a lens speed of 125th of a second. I had to change a battery. Remember to keep plenty of batteries with you for any of your equipment whenever you're out in the field. So. Thankfully, the Seconic meter can remember the settings uh, that we settled on just a few minutes ago, even though I took the battery out and replaced it. I could have used my digital camera to get the same settings or similar settings, but I like this device. I want to check my focus one more time. The two details I was most interested in are, of course, the rear view mirror and the headlight. And I've also placed them towards the center of my ground glass. I like to get whatever I'm photographing towards the center to cover about the middle one third or two fourths. Before I put the film in, we're going to close the aperture. Insert the film, close the standard, remove the dark slide, cock the spring, that's it.
the dark slide back in. In a future video, I'll show you how to develop your own film, but I really enjoy how this photo came out. I realized we've only glossed over the steps to taking your first picture. The real purpose here was to give you a chance to learn the parts of the camera, learn the basic language of film photography, and to check and see if you have all the parts and pieces you'll need to get started. We aren't very good at remembering what we've seen but we are very good at remembering how we felt about what we saw. Similarly, film photography is about impressions of what we've seen. This is where the art of film photography begins. It forces us to slow down, be more thoughtful about what we value when we're making our pictures. I hope you've enjoyed this brief start into the world of film photography. My name is Roger Pafford, and welcome to Film and the Viewing Camera. <laughs>